Let's uh, just spend um, one minute on the first part of the quiz, since that was testing whether you listened in on my first talk, and if you got the idea of the thoughts of, uh, of the guy down here. What are the correct statements? So there are more than one, potentially. Of course it's important. Ah. Uh, uh, of course, of course. <laughs> ADE was the right collection. Let's just, I mean, I, I should have hidden, of course, your identification. So sorry about that. I'll try to remember that. So let's not dwell on the persons here. That was not my intention. Let's just see how many of you actually passed the exam here. 30%. Come on, guys. No have to get moving here, right? Well, anyway, some of you are, all of you, some of the red ones are not too bad off, actually. You have two out of three. That ain't bad, to quote an old rock musician, if you know him. Um, one out of three is not too good, though. Two out of three is acceptable. Anyway, that was the silly part. The other part, so if you still want to share your height with me, please do it. I will see, look into the height data at the end of uh, this lecture, if we manage. This is the first time, so it may break down on me. Let's, um, let's get moving. We are not done. It's not enough to be able to compute the mean and the median. It doesn't tell the full story about data. Here comes a very, 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 very important definition and concept. It was also on my list in the beginning of the heart of this course is understanding variability, right? The first step, or at least one important step in the understanding of variability is to know how to quantify, to compute a measure of variability. That already hopefully will give us a feeling of what it is. And I, I, I'm going to warn you later on, before we, we move on to exercises today, in this course, you, we are ambitious. We are both going to test whether you get the formulas right and understand them and know them. Not by heart, of course, because you can access the material at the exam, but that you should know what it means. So I would like to expect you that you can read a def defining formula like this. Now I'm going to explain it to you in a sec. You should know the formulas and you should be able to use them, even though, of course, I'm going to give you the software to do all the computations. Because in real life, of course, we do not sit and do computations like this manually, nor by old uh, handheld uh, pocket calculators. We use a uh, computer. And you're going to, my point now is, I'm going to emphasize we're going to teach you both. And we're going to expect you to do both. You're going to be engineers. You should know about how the engine works and you should be able to run the engine also. That's what distinguishes us from the theoretical university guys back in there in Copenhagen. We're not only interested in how it works, you sh we should also know, we're not only interested. I'll, I'll rehearse that for next year. Um, <laughs> this is technical science. This is a how science, not a what, uh, why science. That's what I was trying to convey, although I, I'm, <laughs> the problem is, I, I'm actually trained as a why science guy. That's why I'm so enthusiastic of now being a how science guy, right? Um, so I have 11 years of experience of being an, uh, a little more. Anyway, uh, stop that. Variance, standard deviation, almost the same thing, but just on two different scales. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So sort of in my mind, this is the same, right? Sort of roughly. It, it, expresses the same thing, but in two different ways. Let's look at the definition of the variance. The variance is a measure of the fact that we all know that if we talk now, I use the height example to have something specific to, to talk about now. Of course, even though someone tells you that the mean height, what was our number, 178 centimeters, no, in this case, 185 centimeters, 
If someone tells you that the mean height is 185 centimeters, you already know that that does not mean that we are all 185 centimeters. We are different, generally speaking, right? We are not all 185. We are different from 185. How different are we from 185 on average? Could we be 10 centimeters and uh, 100 meters tall? Or is that the kind of difference we could see? No, probably not. Let's measure it from the numbers, because the numbers tell us how different can people be. We can just look at the numbers, right? So we can take each individual number and compare it with the mean. That is how different the person is from the mean, right? And then we can take those five differences and average them. That's the sort of the, the short version. The specific thing is we do it on the squared scale. So we average on the squared scale. I'm not going to spend time. I, I, I claim that we average, even though I don't divide by n. I divide by n minus 1. That makes good sense for many reasons, because we are cheating a little bit in measuring differences. Let me spend a minute on it. You can read about it in the book. The thing is, what we should really do if we would like to measure how different we are on average when it comes to height, what we should actually compare with should be the real mean in the population. That would be the right thing to compare with. How different am I from the mean in the population? But that's a difficult thing, right, because I don't know that. So the only thing I do, I can plug in the average of my own numbers, but then I'm cheating. Because the individual number will, will be closer to the number's own average than it will be to the overall mean, actually. So it's slightly cheating. It's cheating with one degree of freedom. It's cheating with dimension one. This can be proved mathematically. This was not a proof. This was just a heuristics about what is, uh, why this n minus 1 rather than n. Anyway, don't worry about it. To us, it's like averaging. And if you have 100 data points, whether you divide by 100 or 99, we're engineers. Hey, I don't f care, right? Um, <laughs> standard deviation is the square root of the variance. That is back to the original scale. So the standard deviation is the real interpretable number here. Let's look at it. Student heights, the same numbers as before. The mean was 185. I take each individual number and compare it with 185. I square them, so pluses and minuses sort of becomes the same in a way, right? Plus, minus, plus one is the same as minus one. I average by four, not by five. We've, we've talked about that one. I get 29. 29 is a difficult number to use and interpret in its own right. Well, if you when you have done statistics for 30 years, you, you adjust yourself to what a variance of 29 means. But when you're a beginner, I recommend you not maybe to use the variance so much. Let's use the standard deviation, which is the same information, but just root it. Like the root variance, we call that the standard deviation. In this case, it's 5.4 centimeters. That is the interpretable number. We are, on average, 5.4 centimeters different from the mean. So this is quantifying how different we are from the mean. That is a quantification of variability by means of a standard deviation. In Danish, spredning. That's important. And we're going to use that again and 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 again. In various formats, the variance of something is really the key of what this whole course is about. We're going to deal with variances. Whenever we compute something, whenever we compute a complicated thing, when we control our windmills in this very complicated dynamical system where we have online monitors of uh, this complex structure, uh, we're going to quantify something, and we are always, when we quantify something, we're going to think about, hey, is this really the truth? No, it comes with a variance. How do I find the variance? That's statistics. And that's what this is all about, is finding the right variances for the right things that we compute. I, having said that, I've, I've told you everything in a way. We just, I'm just going to show you different ways of doing it in different contexts, actually. There is a slight uh, combination thing here, this just um, for us to remember. Sometimes it may be a good idea, relevant, more meaningful, not to quantify the absolute standard deviation as it comes, 
but to see the size of the standard deviation relative to the mean. It's like if you measure two completely different things, like height and weight, of course you cannot compare the standard deviation of 5 centimeters compared with the standard deviation of 10 kilograms. I, I couldn't compare, but I could take it relative to the mean of those things, then I have kind of a percentage interpretation of diversity, of spread, of variability, different words for the same thing. It's called the coefficient of variation. It's one for the book for you to be able to use. That was standard deviation and variance and then the relative version of it. So we move on to the quantiles. <laughs> 